There you go. Let's go straight at it. it. Yo, uh, what's up, okay. man? So, well, I was going to ask, actually, I, I wanted this to be the opening part of the podcast. Yeah. I was going to ask, so how was your week vacation? What did you do? How did it go? What was it like watching wrestling in the most famous wrestling arena in the world? Well, actually, uh, I, I was, I'm wearing my, uh, my hey. Santos, my Santo versus Zombie shirt. Hey. So, uh. Love that. Not going to lie, man. It went pretty good. Mexico City is a, is a freaking blast. Uh, ate a lot of good food, saw a lot of really cool wrestling. I got, um, they gave me like the little, uh, let me see if I can show you this. Uh, they gave me like the little program here. So, uh, that's the, that's Yo. the fun. yeah, uh, it was oh, pretty yeah. cool, man. It was pretty cool. I got my dad a mask. He really wanted one. El Santo? No, not Santo. He got, uh, he wanted this other one. Uh, his name is Tinieblas and, uh, it's like a gold and black mask. It's pretty cool. Wait a second, did you see El Vikingo? No, Tinieblas. Oh, okay, sorry. No, no, I mean, yeah. like, did you see it? Was he on the program that you had? Oh, no. No, oh. I don't believe so. Uh, uh, and also, I saw that uh, at Arena Mexico, because the, the, the arena is turning, like, 91, I believe. Uh-huh. Uh, they're doing, like, a big, like, show, because they do a show every time they do an anniversary. Chris Jericho is going to come. He's, he's, he's going to be there. Hey, that's awesome. Wow. Okay, you should get tickets pretty cool. Out. Uh, it's in September. I don't know if I can make it, but maybe next year. Dude, It'll be pretty fun. I can't imagine like what their 100 show is going to be. Oh God, I would love to go to that because this one I went to like just like a Tuesday show because they do shows every like Monday, Tuesday, Fridays, uh, Sundays. Yeah, apparently the Fridays are like the best days. I believe, uh, it. but that, that's probably but TV no. day for them. Uh, yeah, they 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 stream them on YouTube, so they're like, yeah, they have like their own their whole like thing. Um, are you on yeah. YouTube? Like, if I go, if, can I find you? Uh, I don't know if I'm there, but I'm pretty sure you can see the fight. Sorry, excuse me about my hair, ladies and gentlemen. I just, I just noticed my thing is doing like a thing. <laughs> I think they, they, de they definitely like stream it. Uh, let me see if like you can see the. Oh God! Six days ago, when was this? This was on Tuesday, which was the 26th. So, there's like a few highlights here and there. Uh, I'll send you the links. No, it's pretty, pretty cool, pretty freaking fun. Had a lot of blast. Got a went to Chapultepec, got my monkey. I got the monkey that you put in your head. Hey, and yeah, no, I have it right here. I have it. That, I have it. It's, uh, no, it's not wait, what. Oh no, that's something. Never mind. No, it's just a monkey that you put on your head. Oh, okay, I, I like it. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's cool. Saw some museums. Got to have some really good food. I went to. Uh, yeah, saw a lot of history. Saw walked a lot. Walk because you got to walk there. How's your feet? Great. I did uh, like what eighteen hundred uh, steps every day, pretty much. That's not too bad. That's not bad at That's, all. It's pretty good, yeah. Because and like my watch was 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 like great. This is what you should be walking every day. I'm like, wow, that's fuck you. Nobody asked. Um, <laughs> but no, it went well. It actually went really well. I'm kind of shocked how well it went. Nobody tried to mug us. Nobody tried to like sell us a timeshare. Nobody tried to like convert us into any religion. It was it was actually pretty freaking good. So I appreciated having some time off. But we are back for this show. We're back for movies. How was your week? What what do you have up? Oh man, dude, I'm running on I think maybe four hours of sleep. I think. I I'm running on four hours of sleep, uh a bowl of soup, and two energy drinks. <laughs> Everything was good until you mentioned the energy drinks. Like we were all good. Fuck you. You, you, you. you should not only have a bowl of soup at 5 p.m. in the afternoon. You should have had no, a you meal. You sh yeah. Then uh, the, that means shouldn't be energy drinks. I, mm, I need my fuel. But uh, no, interesting week. A lot of expansion. Uh, we're launching a new channel in two days. Hopefully, God willing. Yeah. Um, I wrote 27 pages worth of script this past week. 
Awesome. Uh, and I recorded it all last night. So nice. Gonna, for another DCU? Uh, or... No, uh, for like four videos, three of which are for the new channel. Nice. I'm like, if it's going to need content because this, we have a backlog. I didn't realize this. Almost 500 videos between podcasts and video reviews and everything. We yeah. Have all of a backlog. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I need to start giving the other channel some like ammunition. So it's a bunch of like wrestling content mostly, like that I wrote. Heck yeah. So fuck it, let's go. Um, but yeah, running on no goddamn sleep. Well, uh, I think this might be a shorter one. I, I think there's a, uh, you know, the movie though, even though like spoiler, this is a good movie. Um, it's, it's a smaller one, so you know it's gonna be a uh, uh, a little bit less to to you know lose sleep over. So uh, you want to just jump right into it? Uh, sure, Chema, let's fucking go. Thank you for welcoming us into your headphones. My name is Chema. And I'm Eddie. Reviewing Cuckoo, this is uh, the rollback. Fear, it's call. After reluctantly moving to the German Alps with his father and his new family, Gretchen discovers that their new town hides sinister secrets as she's plagued by strange noises and frightening visions of a woman pursuing her. This is the new movie directed by Tillman Singer, starring Hunter Schaefer, Dan Stevens, Jessica Henwick, Martin Xosas, Mila Liu, Greta Fernandez, and other colorful characters. So this is a slightly shorter film, uh, 103 minutes, uh, 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 distributed by uh, Neon, who we just uh, praised a lot during the uh, uh, Long Lex review, and they're becoming like a big a contender in distribution rights. Um, and yeah, director Tillman Singer, he is uh, also uh, a strong a strong force to be reckoned by, directing the last couple of movies, Loose and The End of the World. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, very interesting movie. First, uh, first time that Hunter Schaefer sits at the at the leading uh, of a movie. Uh, she's been a growing force, you know, between shows like Euphoria and also writing for Euphoria and having been showing up in uh, commercial things like the, like the Hunger Games prequel. And now this is her uh, leading role. Um, Interesting. Love that it's an original piece. Love that it's uh, generally didn't know where it was going. I like the beats. I like the rhythm. I like how it was generally, generally creepy. And uh, but it also had a couple of funny scenes, which I really appreciated. I think uh, a movie like this really needs to balance that out. And I think it's a great, uh, great showing for Hunter Schaefer. Like she really is uh, someone that deserves to be at the lead. So I think that this is her movie at the end of the day. Um, and they're really liking this one. What are your general thoughts? What do you think about Cuckoo? Um, I think so. I want to. I want to back you up there for a second. Hunter, at some point, should win an Oscar. I don't uh, know when. I maybe not for this movie, but her performance in this film, to with, I think two particular scenes, t tells me in my soul she should win an Oscar at some point in her career. Um, just an incredibly emotional, terrified, courageous performance. Like, she runs the gambit in this, and she gets the shit kicked out of her a lot in this movie. Um, but no, genuinely, like, an amazing talent. She was never on my radar until I saw this movie, and now I will watch anything that she does, because God damn. Uh, amazing, amazing actress. Uh, Tillman Singer is one sick son of a bitch, and I mean that in the, as a compliment. Um, uh, he did you know about the background of this movie? What made him like come up with it? No idea. Tell me. So he was fascinated by this uh, documentary he said he saw a while back, um, about cuckoos, right? And the birds themselves. And do, do you know about the bird? I'm, I'm assuming, yeah, okay. Uh, well, for any audience members that don't know what cuckoos are, the birds. Um, essentially they're parasitic in nature. What they do is they'll go to another bird's nest, plant their egg in the nest and get rid of one of the eggs and, you know, plant theirs. And then once the, once the egg hatches, the little cuckoo bird, the little one will kill the other birds in the nest. That way the parent only feeds it thinking the parent obviously thinks, oh, this is one of mine. 
doesn't know any better. And then by the time the cocoon's big enough, it leaves. Essentially, like the parents' lineage does not continue. It's a parasitic animal. Um, he saw this and saw horror in it, but he also saw a beautiful majesticness in it as far as like, hey, this is what they have to do to survive. What if we don't make them, you know, completely the the monsters in this? Hence the great writing that comes in this film. And that's another thing I really want to compliment. This we mention, I hark on this a lot. Mm-hmm. Audiences often, I mean, ah, movies will often treat their audience like they're stupid, right? They'll spoon feed you stuff, right? This movie takes the time to hold back so many answers, so many explanations until the third act and that is the way it should be give us especially in a horror film in a thriller film in a slight mystery film hold back those answers hold back all the information until the very end that way when we we find out everything it's just one shot after another after another after another and it it hits all the way through genuinely solid movie solid performances scares i really enjoyed it i busted out laughing in a quiet theater with no one there this when when hunter because you mentioned the comedy also yeah what the fuck says it like that <laughs> like like because yeah. it's true like like she's like the only straight man in the entire thing as far as like does no one else catch the weirdness in here yeah and i like that we had a moment like that because n- not only did it like deviate they don't like uh brought down like the pressure of everything but also we haven't seen a protagonist like do that a lot like every once in a while, we'll get up like a protagonist to like call out like the situation. But I like how she explicitly is like, "This guy is freaking creepy. Why isn't anyone seeing that?" Well, also, uh, and she doesn't she doesn't break the fourth wall. Like if Deadpool was like, "Huh, so are we gonna talk about it now, or are we gonna wait for a, a third uh, third act flashback?" Like he's the only one I can think of that will do shit like that. So for her to do it without breaking the fourth wall, props, props. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a, there is like a, she's placed in this position where she's an outsider. And even in her own family, she's an outsider. So it kind of helps with the situation itself. Yeah. Okay, fuck that father. Okay. Do you want to dive right into it? Fuck. Let's, yeah. Let's, yeah. So, movie opens with, uh, it's a cold open. It's terrifying, but it's only, I think, like two minutes of um, a scream, a yell, a young lady walking out of her house. You see a seizure. You see bad things going on. Um, she runs into the forest. Just badness all around. And then we open with uh, Gretchen moving with her father, her stepmother, and her stepsister. But from the beginning, we see the father, the stepmother, and the stepsister are in one vehicle. Whereas Gretchen, almost like so- like a forgotten like piece of furniture, is in the van with the movers. Like, w- what? Wait, well, hold on. What the fuck? Why are you doing this? Like, from the offset, she feels separate from the from the family. And the dad, no, fuck, I'm gonna call I'm gonna call him a piece of shit several times in this film, does not pursue trying to make her feel like a part of the family. He actively makes her feel like a burden almost. Yeah. Fuck you, dude. Fuck you. I understand from your first marriage, it's still your kid. It's still your blood. Fuck you. Anyway, um, they get to the hotel resort, um, way out in the middle of nowhere in the Bavarian Bavarian Alps, which is, from what I've been told, a very terrifying place. You know, all things considered, do not go to the Bavarian Alps. Um, I'm joking. Is it like? No, is it like a- no I'm oh, joking. Okay. No, it's like Hawaii, but like, but in the mountains. Oh, that's why Damn, I'm like, I, it's a terrible place. Don't go. I had no idea that, that that was like a thing. I thought it was made up for the movie. Oh, no, no, it's a legit place, but yeah, it's basically, yeah, it's like Hawaii, but like for rich, rich, rich. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, he... Which, uh, uh, they are architects, I believe? Yeah, that's what, it's implied that they're managing the construction of, uh, or an expansion of the, uh, of the estate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, when they arrive there, they meet, uh, the character of Mr. Koenig, played by Dan Stevens, who, uh... I'm a big fan of this guy. I like how he's like a character actor. He generally can get very weird with his characters. He was just really good uh, in two movies this year, which are uh, Godzilla X Kong and in Abigail, 
So, uh, you know, we've seen him uh, enough yeah. this year. I forgot he was an Abigail. I was like, yeah. Oh, okay. He delivered, like, the best line in the movie when he goes, like, girl, those are fucking onions. Like, <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so he's he's great in that. He's great in this, uh, too. Um, and he he and, and Schaefer are, like, trying to steal the movie away from each other, like, the whole movie. They are fantastic. Like, they are, like, uh, first of all, because Stevens is genuinely creepy as this overtly nice German uh, hotel manager. Uh, yeah, he kind of brought, like, this, like, overtly perky, like, always-in-your-face uh, uh, personality that I think really help with the creepiness and like i like that schaefer was able to like balance that out and being like this fucking guy like it like like get a load of this guy you know he really and this was little subtle things he he does a lot of little things that wouldn't be perceived as dangerous unless like you know like he he touches her back he violates her like personal bubble he sits on her bed like hey man like social norms dictate you fuck all the way off like the, yeah. the, you don't know me like that, um, yeah. which makes him creepy. And I, I, straight up, because we kind of went into this movie blind, I thought he was kind of like a, a predator, but more in a like like a sexual predator. Like that's what I thought. Yeah. I thought he was the the weird rich guy that gets away with whatever he wants. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised that he's not a stereotype and he's more of a monster than that, or less of. I I don't know what to say with that. He wasn't I what I was it's... expecting. I think if we've gotten to a point where we're like, oh, thank God he's not a rapist. He just wanted to, uh, like, make them inbred and, like, and, like have them raise weird super babies. Yeah. Thank God. At least he has a hobby. Like, <laughs> like no. Like, yeah, this guy's a monster. He's just a different kind of monster. Uh, but much yeah. like you said, you know, I do appreciate that it went in a totally different direction. This is more in the vein of, like, a get out Mad scientist, a, like a mad scientist, it goes kind of like uh, there's this movie called The Neon Demon, which it reminded me of a bit. Um, yeah, it gave me like similar vibes. Uh, this movie is extremely good. I really like where it went, and I like how it was weird and original. It suffered from a couple of things. The main one being that I saw this as a double feature with Alien with Alien Romulus, mm. and it's not fair to this movie because Romulus is extremely good. Um, it's going to be just keep, just, you know, pick your poison. Just watch whatever you want. Um, I do have a couple of criticisms of the movie, uh, but they don't distract uh, from the main uh, uh, good points about it. Uh, the main one is that I, I do think, while I did like how the movie kept me on my toes, I don't like how it kept throwing new things at the screen. Uh like, at first, it's just a mystery of this. She's being chased. Well, at first, it's just, like, a drama with the family. Then she's being chased. Then there's, like, a weird time travel thing. Then there's a lady that's floating. Then there's a lady that's, like, just just moving from te uh, uh, teleporting from place to place. So it starts throwing a lot of a, a lot of things to the screen. Like, you start seeing, gotcha. um, yeah, the, this woman floating, this woman teleporting. Then there's guns. Then there's a detective. Then there's uh, then there's uh, oh, is it all in her head? Then there is we're cloning babies, or we're having them ra we're having them being raised by like a a weird like fraction of super women that are being like injected to be animal slave uh, uh, sl slaves uh, uh, hybrids with like yes a crazy okay, mind yeah. they're being drugged and like it's a lot to fall like by the end I remember like the movie ended I turned to my two friends and I went like did anyone did they mention if the dad made it did they mention if the stepmom made it like is there any mention of like we went I, through I, think, so I assume that they were gunned down but like they don't show it like they don't they don't like I'm like they kind of went through a lot and uh, they didn't like really close out the door on a, on a lot of things. Like uh, I appreciate them for being, you know, trying a lot of things and being very experimental. But I would have preferred a more tight, controlled, focused story over one that tries tries a lot of things and not really closes out all of them. I like it. I I want to see more movies like this, but I want them to get uh, a little uh, more consistent. Uh, at a later time. That, I think, affected a little bit of my enjoyment of the film. 
but I did like the overall product. Yeah. I think um, part of it for me, actually, that, that was not a problem for me at all, but I think it's because I liked the fact that everything continued to escalate. At first, it's this guy's weird to, wait, I got attacked, and then no one believes her except this detective. It's like, I think she's a murderer. And then we find out she's not a murderer, she's a monster. She's almost something akin to an urban legend. Um, I, I use this phrase a lot, and I'm sorry, but it, it's accurate. It feels like more YouTube analog horror, like the kind of story of, there's a story of the cuckoo lady who, if she finds you late at night by yourself, you risk being attacked or worse. You know, is that really your child? Question mark. Um, <clears throat> I think it fits. And I also like the, the, the thought into the writing that goes into it. For example, when, when the, the bird lady, when the cuckoo screams, that scream doesn't have one, not two, but three different defense mechanisms, right? Yeah. The first part is it disorientates and causes like a time loop to its victim. And then all it has to do is smash them in between the eyes. I mean, in between the ears and the victim almost falls into a paralysis. Like they're unable to defend themselves, you know, opening themselves up to being impregnated by this slime that, you know, will cause them to, to have a child that is not theirs. But it's also uh, almost like a like an SOS, like a distress signal, like a warning of danger. And we see that happen when um, Alma, when, yes. when Gretchen gets near Alma, she doesn't do anything. But then the time loop begins to happen. Notice with Gretchen, she has her headphones on initially. To Alma, yeah. instinctually, all she knows is danger. For some reason, this call is telling me danger smacks Gretchen. And we know Alma is not a violent person. We know that from later on in the film, which again, I will get to happily. But um, yeah, the little things like that. It's one, it's, it's to disorientate victims. Two, it's a distress signal slash like warning signal. Three, it's also meant as a defense mechanism when it's cornered, often to knock out or kill the husbands or whoever may try to interfere with the impregnation process. I like all three aspects of it. But it also makes sense storytelling-wise because when Gretchen is riding her bike and she's first attacked, she has her headphones on. Yeah. It makes sense why the screech didn't work on her. It should have, but it didn't. That's the only reason why she survived. But it, that doesn't come to you until later on when you see the do the, the good doctor and, uh, and the cop wearing the headphones. It's like, oh, that's why she was safe. Oh, that's why I did this. Little things like that. I love the long-term payoff in that capacity. I love the fact that it sets so much up. I appreciate that, the thought process. Um, I like how we have that. I think the the, la the lasting scene that I'm going to remember more about this movie is the scene when she's uh, biking away from the hotel to her house. And uh, and she's biking there, and they you see, like, the shadows. And you start to see, like, the shadow of the lady, like, creeping to her. Like little by little, it's and you start to see like with the lights, yeah, like it cuts off, yeah, super good, super. Great. It kept me on my toes, yeah, and um, like I said, Schaefer just freaking sells this. Like you believe her as like this, uh, annoyed like a uh, teenage young adult character, um who um you know very it's a it's kind of they don't really specify when this takes place but there is a lot of like early to early to late 2000s uh stereotype like she's a rocker chick uh she's playing bass she kind of doesn't get along with her family there's like a lot of that uh that early teenage -er hoods um that you see very much explained into that and i like how uh the way that she starts looking throughout the film with like the headband and with the jacket and everything like you can tell the you can tell they kind of wanted this to become like a halloween costume like you can tell they kind of wanted to be like <laughs> you can also have the gretchen look and and because she is such like a uniquely looking person she kind of really stands out in, in something like this so it is a cool outfit it's a cool like uh setup and everything uh very creepy and uh i do like how it ends like i like the final like shootout with like her and with the sister as she's carrying her throughout the uh yeah uh super original never 
thought I would see something like that. I do think the detective jumped between like in kind of relevance throughout the film, so like a little bit. Um, but I do like the conclusion. I, I I do like where it ended at the end. Mm-hmm. The um, I I do appreciate the fact that the detective was pretty much chaotic neutral. He was not to save Alma. He was anti you know bird lady at whatever cost you know. And he saves Gretchen. He did not have to. He has a moral yeah. compass. She's innocent. I need to get her out. But again, that's brilliantly used later on in the film. Whereas Koenig um, is very much, I need to save Alma. You know, I need to save this species of human. Um, he very much uses. Uh, he very much uses uh, visitors. He uses the the area to his advantage to impregnate. You know, these young lovers. But again, there's also a catch there. If the woman is on her back, she could die of asphyxiation, which happened to henry the detective's wife which again yeah. fucking brilliant um those little things that add up to later di- to add up to later things even the part where we know gretchen's mom has passed away she's still calling her mom still trying to deal with the grief which also, also again this is another point fuck the father for not talking to her and letting her grieve and giving her the time of day. I understand you have a little girl that you think is having seizures all the time. You don't have one kid. You have two. Yeah. Fuck you. Anyway, that's it. Um, when it comes to the fact that Alma calls Gretchen's mother, not knowing that she's gone, not knowing that she's dead, to ask her, hey, can you come visit Gretchen? I know she's been calling you, but I haven't called her back. Can you come yeah. visit us, please? So It'll make her happy. A little moment from from a pure kid that just wants good things you know and that that little moment is enough the two scenes that made me say hunter schaefer will win an oscar someday are the scene where she's bawling snot coming out of her nose tears coming out of her eyes crying listening to her mom's voice yeah that scene which is beautifully heartbreaking and then the other beautifully heartbreaking scene when gretchen is talking to alma to try and get her to trust her again and oh, yeah. and and she she takes off her arm sling and signs to her saying you know um thank you you know my mom's not coming but she says thank you for calling you know stuff like that yeah. that that like just oh i fucking love that the, the normally i hate it when action does not resolve a uh, film's climax it's emotion like like the part in wonder woman the first one where she says i pick love yeah. Okay, it's a little cringe, but that's fine. Or in the the second one where they beat, what's his face, um, Maxwell Love, Maxwell Lord with the power of love. I hate yeah, that again. I hate that. But in this film, when they walk out, the two sisters holding on to each other, knowing I'm going to be your bulletproof shield, and I'm trusting you to be mine. Fucking chef's kiss, beautiful. I loved it. I loved it, and I loved it some more. Um, and then when Alma makes the call of covering uh, Gretchen's ears to cause the time loop so they can get out of there, yeah, the third chef's kiss. God damn! If this is a Michelin star quality meal of a film, because of the brilliant writing, the payoffs, the way it's executed, just all the way around, I have nothing but praise for this film. I, I and it's quick. It it's it's only a hundred minutes. You can knock this out. You know, very easily over d- dinner or relaxing, like, and but it's so fucking good. I do not recommend that you do anything but watch this film the first time, because it's one of those movies where you need to pay attention to so that things click later on. I'm sorry, mate. As you can tell, I was a big fan of this one. I really, really yeah. Did. No, no, no. I'm I I'm surprised. I I I, I didn't think it, it was gonna hit uh so much with you. Um. Uh, I I'm with you on the I'm on the Hunter Schaefer train. I've been on it since I saw her in Euphoria. She plays one of the main characters. Uh, so just seeing her in that show, I knew that she was going to be something really special. And you know, she was great in this. I'm really glad to have seen her uh, lead. We're going to see her again this month or next month when Kinds of Kindness, uh, the New York was Lanthimos. She's also in that, and uh, she just signed on to be in the Blade Runner TV show along with Michelle Yeoh. And uh, I'm gonna say this again because I said it on the on the Apes episode, but she is my choice to play Princess Zelda. So I hope it happens. That's still okay. my fan cast. Yeah, she's my choice to play to play Princess Zelda. So uh, I see it. I actually yeah. can see it. 
Yeah. Uh, so I I am excited. I I do like seeing her in things. I do want to see her more in things. So so uh, uh, as well as Dan Stevens, I thought he was fantastic in this. And Jessica Henwick, who we haven't talked, but she plays a stepmom. Um, I really like her. I I see what she was in the Iron Fist TV show, and then she she was just in Glass Onion. Uh, and she's been in a couple more things. She's been she was in the New Matrix. She was in the Gray Man. She's been in cool things. Uh, so I like see, so these are all really good actors. I like the movie. Uh, I like that it felt smaller. It was a mistake seeing it along with Romulus because it really should have deserved its own day. If you still have a chance to see it in theaters, I highly recommend that you do. But I feel like it's going to thrive on the streaming market. I feel like people are going to love to stream this one. I, I, think, I have a good feeling about this one, yeah. I'm really hoping this one like is one of those cult follow films. I, I can see this genuinely being m- much like... Uh, God damn, does it... I in the video review I mentioned this has been an amazing year for horror in general, right? So many good ones, some really shady ones. The Strangers sucked, um, but for the most part, this uh, it's been an amazing year for scary movies for horror films. And this is another one I think I'm gonna have to put in my rotation, which is getting frustrating because I think this is like the third movie this year I'm gonna have to do that with. There was Late Night with the Devil. Uh, what was the other one? The other great analog horror. Not Maxine. There was another one that re- very recently that we reviewed. Long Licks? Which one? Long Licks? Yes. Yes. So now I'm going to have to... Now all three of these are going to be in my Halloween... Like my October uh, rotation. Yeah. Which... God damn it, man. But okay. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm on that same spot al- along with uh, Immaculate, which was also great this year. Uh, Maxine, Laughter. yeah, uh, Lisa Frankenstein, which wasn't super scary, but it's very Halloweeny. Like it's in, it's in the mood, so it's it's Definitely. a scary movie. The same way a Nightmare Before Christmas is scary. It's kind of hokey, but it has some elements. It's got it's, got, it's it takes uh, it takes a lot of fun. Uh, I I highly recommend people watch Cuckoo. Um, I don't have a lot more to say. Um, just that it's a super fun movie, and it's really fun to just uh, be in that puzzle and just let it unbox itself in front of you. Uh, it's not like uh, long legs where you have to, where you I think have to uh, participate mm-hmm. in it. I think this one is just more displayed towards you, which uh, I think is really cool. And aesthetically, it's also a very pretty looking movie. So mm-hmm. yeah, I give it three and a half out of five stars. I thought it was, like I said, very entertaining, and I cannot wait to see where Hunter takes us next. Fair. Um, Cuckoo is the kind of movie I wish we would get more of. Not only is it original. But the writing is very clever. That's the word I'm going to use. This is a very clever movie with the way it does things, with the way it introduces things, the way it introduces mechanisms and pays them off later on. Like, the writing, I'll say, is a 10 out of 10. I'll say that for the writing. Like, like brilliant as far as, like, revealing things but holding back information until the right moment. That I will say. Uh, the movie itself, in execution... Completely, I would give it a 7 out of 10. But Hunter, I do genuinely believe, will win an Oscar. Not if, but when. Yeah. I think, we'll, I th- and I don't think that's uh, that's too far away. I do think it's, uh, we're, we're close to that. She just needs to be released from that euphoria bubble and she'll be good to go. So what's the deal with that, though? Are they like, is she like contractually obligated? They're going to do another season. Like, they just confirmed it, but... Like everyone involved in Euphoria is kind of doing amazing by themselves, so it kind of feels like why would why would they make another one? Uh, uh, also, they 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 can't play high schoolers anymore. Like they 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 they, they look older. Like between hers and Daya, Sydney Sweeney, Jacob Lordy, like all of them, they, they they look older. Like they can't go back. But we'll see. We'll maybe see they, they do. Get. Maybe they do like a college senior year Euphoria season and like call it a day there. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Depends. Depends Look, on man, the either jump, either do it quickly or jump ahead in time. It's the same thing with Stranger Things. Those kids are getting too old. Jump forward five to seven years. That way, they can be older and deal with the problems. Yeah, they're not gonna do that either. They're, they're gonna they're gonna keep acting like those kids are in middle school. Uh, I'm you right now, they're gonna fight a dragon in the series finale. They're fighting a dragon. That, that's gonna. Well, I cannot wait for that show to be done. Uh, uh, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, all right. So I believe that can that yeah that pretty much wraps everything up. Where like like I said, it's a it's a slightly shorter. I said uh, as the movie is also slightly shorter. 
Uh, next week, what do I want to do next week? Uh, my adventures with Superman. Sounds good. Uh, uh also, uh, or do you want to do Bill Juice, Bill Juice next week? Uh, whichever. I've never seen the original. Now might be the time. Uh, actually, no, that's a lie. I think I did see it when I was younger, but I have no memory of it whatsoever. I remember the dance sequence. Yeah, no, I have seen it, but I don't remember any of it. I just remember a dance sequence. Um, yeah. and it ends with her bringing the ghosts, the newspaper. Damn, that's all I remember. It's, it sits well. It's one of my favorites uh, from Burden, and which is not easy to say because I'm not a big fan of him. But we'll see. It's getting good reviews, uh, which I'm surprised. I thought it was going to crash and burn, but we'll see. We'll see how it comes back. I mean, we'll yeah, we we will see. I mean, the, the first Beetlejuice is apparently a classic. Yeah. Um, when it comes to Hey, who saw Alice uh, looking uh, through the looking glass? Anyone? Nobody. Anyone? Didn't yeah. Think. But no, yeah. unfortunately, the, Disney is living off our nostalgia, so I'm pretty sure that uh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice will be fine. And then they'll do part three because you know they will. Beetlejuice is not owned by Disney, though. It's not. That's, it's not owned by. Di- oh, it's Warner it's Brothers. Warner Brothers, baby. God damn it! Oh Warner no, Brothers. who's living off nostalgia? Yeah. I could have sworn that I've seen it on uh, Disney pl- on uh, not Disney on D- the Disney Channel. No, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so yeah, Disney's the one that's living up nostalgia. Anyway, join us next week for our conversation on another version of Superman. Um, <laughs> while we wait for the next version of Superman coming out next week, hey, next year. Fuck you. The animated series is good. I know that. I'm the one that says that. Okay. All right. Uh, all right, Paul, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Chema. Uh, I've been Eddie. And this was The Robot. Signing off with a reminder to not move to the German apps. There's something off there. Also, don't live off energy drinks. It's not good for you. That's what I've been saying. I mean, energy drinks yeah. are okay, but like, don't only consume them. Sure. Also consume cigarettes. Good night. <laughs>